Yo, what is up guys, Dale Boy here. A quick preview for Adam Kalnetsky versus Chris Ariola. This fight goes down on the 3rd of August and it takes place at the Barclays Center in New York. Right off the bat, I've got to say I make Adam Kalnetsky a big favorite going into this fight. Ultimately, he is the younger, fresher fighter who's coming off good momentum, whereas Chris Ariola is coming towards the end of a long, tough career. Ariola is 38 years old, and over the last few years, his form really has been patchy. He obviously suffered two defeats to Bermain Stavern. He also got beaten by Deontay Wilder, and even in some of the fights he's won, so for example, the Fred Cassie fight, that was a gift decision. He lost that fight. The Travis Kaufman fight again, another fight arguably he should have lost. So Ariola in recent years has been on the decline and I believe he's seen better days. Ariola is coming off a couple of stoppage wins, but it must be said that these guys were of a low level. So he fought a guy called Lorenzo Smith. Lorenzo Smith is a journeyman, nothing to really see there. And he also beat an unbeaten prospect called Jean-Pierre Augustin. And I've got to say, Augustin was one of the worst heavyweight prospects that I've seen in some time. He had an unbeaten record of 17-0 and 0 with one draw, but he was awful. So, although Ariola is coming off a couple of stoppage wins, you know, these guys were at a very low level. So, I don't really believe you can read too much into that. I fully expect when Ariola steps up again, he will get beat decisively, and that's how I see this fight. Adam Kalnatsky these days is a borderline top 10 heavyweight. I've seen him in quite a few top 10 heavyweight lists, and I don't really disagree with those lists, if I'm being honest. And for me, you know, this fight just favours Kalnatsky at this stage. Both guys have a similar style. Both guys are aggressive, and they like to come forwards. They like to throw a lot of punches and overwhelm their opponents. Kalnatsky has more volume than Chris Ariola, even when Chris Ariola was in his prime, and I would say Kalnatsky has quicker hands and quicker feet, but they are similar fighters. But I believe Ariola these days, he's, he's just not fresh enough. He doesn't have enough in the tank to have that type of fight with Adam Kalnatsky. Ariola's style is a young man's style, but Ariola isn't a young man. Like I said, 38 years old coming off a really tough career. Kalnatsky is fresher, he's coming off more momentum, and I fully expect him to win this fight. And I also expect him to win it quite well. I expect a decisive win from Adam Kalnatsky, potentially a mid-round stoppage. In the first couple of rounds, I'm sure Ariola is going to have some success. Kalnatsky is there to be hit. His defense is, you know, it's not great. So I'm sure Ariola, in the early rounds, will land some good shots and have his moments, but ultimately, I just expect Adam Kalnatsky to get on top of him, and he will overwhelm the older Chris Ariola with his aggression, volume, and desire. So, I have Adam Kalnatsky winning this fight by a mid-round stoppage. It could be fun, though, I will say that much. I don't believe Chris Ariola will go in there to lie down. I'm sure he'll give it a go. I just don't believe this guy has much left, if I'm being honest with you. In an ideal world, you would have expected Adam Kalnatsky to have fought a better opponent than Chris Ariola, it's got to be said. But at least he's staying active, I can say that much. And um, yeah, I like I said, I expect Adam Kalnatsky to win this fight by a mid-round stoppage. There's also a couple of fights on the undercard to have a look at. So you've got Marcus Brown versus Jean Pascal. I mean, I've got to say, I really don't like this fight. Jean Pascal in his last six fights is three and three, three wins, three losses. He's seen better days. He's well past it. He's actually already retired once. This fight basically does nothing for Marcus Brown. Again, I get he needs to stay active. That's fair enough. But Jean Pascal, come on now. It's not a great fight. I fully expect Marcus Brown to win, and I expect him to win well. I don't believe he will have many problems 
with Jean Pascal these days. Pascal a couple of years ago or a few years ago would have been a great fight for Marcus Brown, but not now. Not now. Um, also on the card, you've got Andre Berto. He is fighting Miguel Cruz. Miguel Cruz was at one point a prospect in the welterweight division, but Miguel Cruz got comprehensively outpointed by Josecito Lopez. So, you know, Miguel Cruz isn't the best of fighters in the world. And uh, I'm sure even at this stage, Andre Berto should have too much for him. And last but not least, you also have Curtis Stevens on the card. And he is fighting at super welterweight. And he is going to be fighting Wale Omotoso. That's actually quite a decent fight. Arguably, that's the best fight on the card. You know, Curtis Stevens, he can be a fun fighter to watch. Very good punching power. He's aggressive. He comes to fight. And Omotuso, over the years, has been, you know, a good gatekeeper. A very tough guy who can box a bit. Solid fight. I'm looking forward to that fight between Curtis Stevens and Wale Omotoso. And uh, other than that, there's not really too much on the card to look forward to. A few prospects here and there. But I've got to say, for a Fox card, for a mainstream card, it's not great. I'll be honest. It's not great. But, um, yeah. Share your thoughts below, how do you feel about this card, how do you feel about the main event, and uh, also share your thoughts on the undercard. Peace.